Welcome back to Traveling Dice. I'm Jason. In today's video, it's all about that base. All right. So, with the release of Warhammer the Old World, it's possible that you're an old-time Warhammer player coming back, and you might be looking at rebasing your old collection, or considering it. This video is not really about trying to convince you whether or not you should rebase your army. I actually don't think it's that big a deal either way. Uh, if you are really adverse to rebasing, I think just start out playing and trying the new game if you're interested in doing so uh, with the models on the old base. And yeah, have some fun with it. If you're excited about rebasing, like I am, um, for a variety of reasons, one of the reasons being is that there's plenty of the old Warhammer models that really struggled to fit on their base that they came with. And I think a lot of the range is really going to benefit from being on the larger base. And it's going to take away some of the frustrations that existed with trying to rank up some of the older models. So personally, I'm actually really looking forward to it because it's going to solve some of those issues that I had with many of the models. Some models even kind of surprisingly so. Even a lot of the dwarf range really struggled to rank up on the 20 mil bases. But regardless, if you are thinking about rebasing uh, and you have an old collection, then I think there is the question of where am I going to get the new bases? And am I going to take this opportunity to kind of rethink how I'm basing and what material I'm basing out of? And this video is about an alternative source for bases that I discovered that has honestly really blown me away, both in terms of the quality and also in terms of the price. So these are kind of the two things. These are the old GW bases. So you have your 20 mils, 25 mil, this is a 40 mil, 50 mil, this is a 50 by 100 mil. And then of course you have like the bigger base, which I don't have out right now, the like Arachnorok spider base, 100 and 150 mil. So the GW bases are great. Um, a few features that, that really stand out with the GW bases. Number one, they have kind of a beveled edge. So this is a, a stylistic thing. I think warmer players are kind of used to it, and it is is probably, you know, widely considered the norm. But with the beveled edge of the base, when uh, two models are adjacent to one another, it kind of creates a little gap at the top. So this has an effect of kind of framing each individual model. And at a glance, it's very easy to see the individual models. So I think in terms of gameplay, it does have that benefit. It is a stylistic thing though. So other than that, the GW bases, they work well. Um, the only thing that, that tended to come up for me at time, uh, time to time is some of the GW bases uh, would warp a little bit in my experience. Probably the chariot base, the 100 uh, by 50 mil base being the worst culprit in that regard. But I live in a very hot area uh, and we experience, you know, high temperatures and this base tended to warp on me to the point where I would actually customarily when putting a model on one of these bases actually reinforce the bottom with a bunch of hard plastic. Uh, and that worked well, but it was like another step that I had to do. I think these bases work well if you're uh, magnetizing your bases. You can put in some green stuff or some kind of material and put your magnet in there. Um, so I'm not going to claim that the alternative that I'm going to share with you uh, is necessarily better than that, but it does have a different method for doing it. So on Etsy, I discovered a shop called Phalanx Games and Sundry, and they produce a bunch of MDF bases, uh, amongst other things. So right here we have a 25 mil square base. They are super accurate. So hand in hand with the GW base, definitely the accuracy is there. And they actually produce all of the sizes that I was looking for as I started to grab a bunch of new bases for my rebasing projects. One of the nice things is I started to work with some of the MDF bases and just kind of observed how they respond to various elements is I do not think that these are going to warp. I think that they're very, uh, warp resistant. I think MDF in general kind of 
holds its flat surface very well as a material. And I, I think that that's just amazing. They're solid. So one of the things, if you're interested in magnetizing these bases that I have found is that I can just drill a hole in the base and I can, uh, a hole ideally really about the size of your magnet, but uh, in, in my experience, it tends to have to be a little bit bigger depending upon your drill collection. And then you can drop your magnet in and if need be, you can put a little material uh, over it like green stuff or something along those lines. So magnetizing these is super easy, I think, and really convenient in that regard. I think there's a lot of other benefits to these bases here as well. One of the things that if you ever have to rebase your army and you're actually using an MDF base, all of a sudden removing the old base actually becomes very, very easy because MDF doesn't mix well with water. You know, water is gonna destroy any MDF material. Your glues, your paints, these are all gonna work just fine. But if you leave this in water, uh, it will just soak up the water and as you handle it, it will crumble and completely fall apart. Which is actually interesting because if you ever wanted to take this model off the base, or if I ever wanted to take this model off the base, I could simply set this in a very shallow cup of water, not getting the model wet, but just the base, I could come back probably somewhere between 12 and 24 hours later and the base would just completely fall apart in my hands. And then I could take a hobby knife and remove just a little last bit that was still stuck to the model's feet. So that's kind of cool having that option. You do want to be mindful that you never want to leave these sitting in moisture unless you are in fact trying to destroy them. I will point out that these will look different than the GW bases in that they do not have that beveled edge. Okay, so they're angular, they have a 45 degree edge, and when the models butt up next to each other, you're not gonna see that gap at the top like you do with a GW model. Now again, I think that's just a stylistic thing. I don't think it really matters for gameplay at all. It took me a little bit to get used to it because I'm so used to seeing these are GW bases, that gap at the top. But once I started to look at the models more, I got more and more accustomed to it. And I actually really like the fact that they go up to one another and you can still see that line in between. So it's not like that's non-existent. All right, so the benefits here, very flat, very resistant to warping, um, solid. You can drill holes into it if you wanted to uh, pin your model to the base, you can drill the, the necessary hole through this and you have a nice surface for pinning, uh, for inserting magnets, things of that nature. So awesome in that regard. Really love these bases in terms of their quality. They're very accurate and they're smooth, but here's the kicker. The price point is just amazingly good in my mind. And especially if you start comparing it to purchasing some of the new bases from Games Workshop directly. So for example, let's say the 30 mil base, which I don't even have any Games Workshop ones, but let's say you have an orc and goblin army and you have a bunch of orcs. So now you need a bunch of 30 mil bases. In fact, maybe you need like 100. If you had a really big orc and goblin army, maybe you even need something like 200 of these. If you were to buy these from Games Workshop, it is $50 for a hundred of these. So if you needed 200 for your orc army, you're talking about dropping a hundred dollars on 30 mil bases. That is, uh, that's rough sledding. That really is. I, I don't really, I'm not one to complain about the GW prices all that much. I think they, they have a premium product. I love their models. Um, you know what you're getting into with the hobby. Uh, it has a certain cost to it, um, but man, just spending 50 cents per base, especially if they're the older models, you might've only originally bought those for a dollar or $2 a model, depending upon how old your collection is. And in terms of the percentage cost from base to model, if you're looking at replacing it with a GW base, um, is, is really shocking in terms of the percentage. Now, from Phalanx Games and Sundry, I purchased 30 mil bases 
Uh, now, as a returning customer, I did get a 10% discount for 130 mil bases, it was $7.30. And compare that uh, to the Games Workshop, which is for 130 mil bases uh, on the website, it's listed at $50. So $7.30 versus $50 for the, the 30 mil. This is the largest example of a savings. Like as you go larger bases, I think the, the savings is still there, but it's, it's less exaggerated than that. But it is a really good deal. Uh, same with the 25 mil bases. So 25 mil, again, on the Games Workshop website, these are a uh, hundred for $50. If you're going and getting the Games Workshop version, a hundred of these for $50, 50 cents a base. If you were to purchase these from the Phalanx Games and Sundry, uh, through Etsy, uh, with the, uh, 10% discount, if you're able to get it, it is a hundred bases for $6 and 75 cents. The new CAV bases, if you have an old Brett army and you need a bunch of 30 by 60 mil bases uh, on the Games Workshop website, these are listed at 20 bases for $18. Uh, for the same $18, you can get 100 from Phalanx Games and Sundry. And I actually feel like this is a superior base. I, I really like the MDF. It's pleasant to work with. Um, being able to drill a hole in it feeling confident that these aren't going to warp. And again, you know, uh, I, I've only had them for a little bit of time, so I can't, I, I mean, I've had some of these bases for decades, right? And, and they don't, they don't always warp and the smaller bases usually do quite well. The 50 by a hundred mil base, this 50 by a hundred mil base, you can get 25 of these for 1295 from Phalanx Games and Sundry. If you're looking at picking up the GW 50 by 100 mil base, uh, I checked this evening and they were listed at three of these for $6.50. And again, when I quote the prices on the Phalanx Games and Sundry, uh, I am looking at it with the applied 10% off as a, a return customer. It seems to be a promotion that they're offering currently. So that may not be the case when you order, uh, but still just remarkable savings. So. If you were considering basing, I would look around. Even if you're not getting Games Workshop bases, like you can get similar bases to this that aren't Games Workshop, and they are cheaper than Games Workshop. And honestly, at a glance, you you can't tell a difference, right? Unless you're looking for the the GW logo, right? GW 2001. Uh, unless you're looking for that logo, you can get bases just like this. You can't tell the difference and they're cheaper, but I don't think that they're really competing with these prices. And I, I shopped around a little bit and this was not only the best deal I could find at the time, uh, I'm just absolutely blown away by the quality. And I will say for the record, uh, I'm, I'm not getting any kind of sponsorship. I wasn't given bases. I purchased all my bases already. Uh, Phalanx Games and Sundry doesn't even know I'm doing this review, so I'm, I'm not being compensated in any way. I'm just giving you my thoughts, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to their Etsy shop. Uh, if you're in the market for new bases and you've been thinking about pulling the trigger and starting to rebase some of your collection for the old world, then I think that this shop is an amazing source. They had great customer service. Um, great communication, fast shipping, and just really impressed by the product. Um, so yeah, check it out. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I hope your rebasing and army projects are going well. Bye for now.